Mayor Buttigieg, you served in Afghanistan, where just yesterday two U.S. service members were killed. There are currently about 14,000 U.S. service members in Afghanistan. You've said, quote, one thing everybody can agree on is that we're getting out of Afghanistan. Will you withdraw all U.S. service members by the end of your first year in office? We will withdraw. We have to. In your first year? Yes. Look, around the world, we will do whatever it takes to keep America safe. But I thought I was one of the last troops leaving Afghanistan when I thought I was turning out the lights years ago. Every time I see news about somebody being killed in Afghanistan, I think about what it was like to hear an explosion over there and wonder whether it was somebody that I served with, somebody that I knew, a friend, roommate, colleague. We're pretty close to the day when we will wake up to the news of a casualty in Afghanistan who was not born on 9-11. I was sent into that war by a congressional authorization as well as a president. And we need to talk not only about the need for a president committed to ending endless war, but the fact that Congress has been asleep at the switch. And on my watch, I will propose that any authorization for the use of military force have a three-year sunset and have to be renewed. Because if men and women in the military have the courage to go serve, members of Congress ought to have Thank to you, summon Mayor. the courage to vote on whether they ought Thank to be Thank you, there. Mayor. I want to bring in Congressman O'Rourke. Congressman O'Rourke, responding, uh, returning rather to the question of whether you would withdraw all U.S. service members from Afghanistan during your first year in office as president. How do you respond, sir? I would in my first term in office. I uh, agree that there is nothing about uh, perpetuating this war already in its 18th year that will make it any better. We've satisfied the reasons for our involvement in Afghanistan in the first place. And it's time to bring those service members back home from Afghanistan, but also from Iraq, also from Yemen and Somalia and Libya and Syria. There is no reason for us to be at war all over the world tonight. As president, I will end those wars and we will not start new wars. We will not send more U.S. service members overseas to sacrifice their lives and to take the lives of others in our name. We can resolve you, these challenges peacefully Thank and you, diplomatically. Thank you, Governor Hickenlooper, you disagree. You've said that you're open to keeping some service members in Afghanistan beyond your first term. I look at it as a Please humanitarian respond. issue, and with all due respect, you're looking at the condition of women. If we completely Thank pull you. our troops out of there, you're going to see a, a humanitarian disaster that will startle and, and, and frighten every man, woman, and child in this country. And I don't think, I mean, we have troops in over 400 different locations around the world. Most of them are small. They're peacekeeping. They're not greatly at risk. We're going to have to be in Afghanistan. Look at the progress that's happened in that country. We're going to turn our backs and walk away from people that have risked their lives to help us and build a different future for Afghanistan and that Thank part you, of Governor. the world. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Senator Warren, you want to make it U.S. policy that the U.S. will never use a nuclear weapon unless another country uses one first. Now, President Obama reportedly considered that policy but ultimately decided against it. Why should the U.S tie its own hands with that policy? Because it makes the world safer. The United States is not going to use nuclear weapons preemptively, and we need to say so to the entire world. It reduces the likelihood that someone miscalculates, someone misunderstands. Our first responsibility is to keep ourselves safe. And what's happening right now with Donald Trump as they keep expanding the different ways that we have nuclear weapons, the different ways that they could be used, puts us all at risk. You know, we talk about what's happening around the world. I have three older brothers who served in the military. I see that they would do anything. Our military is the best on earth, but we should not be asking our military to take on jobs that do not have a military solution. We need to use our diplomatic tools, our economic tools, and if we're gonna send someone into war, we better have a plan for how we're gonna get them out on the other end. Thank you, Senator. Governor Bullock, your response to Senator Warren's proposal to the U.S. never use a nuclear weapon first? I wouldn't want to take that off the table. I think America's strength, we have to be able to say that. Look, never, I hope, certainly in my term or anyone else, would we really even get close to pulling that trigger. But by the same token, America's strength, and look, this president's made America versus America alone. 
Our allies no longer trust us. Our adversaries are with us. But going from a position of strength, we should be negotiating down so there aren't nuclear weapons. But drawing those lines in sand at this point, I wouldn't do. Thank you, Governor. Senator Warren, your response? Look, we don't expand trust around the world by saying, you know, we might be the first ones to use a nuclear weapon. That puts the entire world at risk and puts us at risk right in the middle of this. At a time when Donald Trump is pulling out of our nuclear negotiations, expanding the opportunities for nuclear proliferation around the world, has pulled us out of the deal in Iran, and Iran is now working on its nuclear weapon, the world gets closer and closer to nuclear warfare. Senator, we that, have to have Senator. an announced policy that is one the entire world can live with. We need to make that clear. We will respond you, if Senator someone Warren. else does, but Governor not Bullock, first. Governor Bullock, please respond. Part I agree with, but by the same token, like we need to get back to nuclear proliferation. Why? But when you have folks deproliferation, <laughs> reducing them, but at the same time, when you actually have Korea, when you have others, I don't want to turn around and say, well, Detroit has to be gone before we would ever use that. When so many crazy folks are getting closer to have a nuclear weapon, I don't want them to think I could strike this country and I, I and we as the United States of America wouldn't do a thing. Part of the strength really is the ability Governor to Bullock, deter. So Governor, thank you very much. Uh, Moving on now. On, can I add Moving on now, please, Senator. Not... Senator, please. Moving on now. As you know, to serve as President of the United States, all of you know this, you have to be at least 35 years old. So, Mayor Buttigieg, <laughs> you just qualified. You're 37, the youngest candidate in this field. Standing next to you is the oldest candidate, Bernie Sanders, at age 77. Should voters take into consideration age when choosing a presidential candidate? I don't care how old you are. I care about your vision. But I do think it matters that we have a new generation of leaders stepping up around the world. Uh, leaders like the, um, I actually think it's good that the Prime Minister of New Zealand's gotten a lot of attention in democratic debates. She's masterful. She is younger uh, than I would be when I take office. Uh, this is the kind of trend America might be leading uh, instead of following, but only if it's actually backed by the right vision. Uh, and we can have great presidents at any age. What I will say is we need the kind of vision that's going to win. We cannot have a vision that amounts to back to normal. The only reason we got this president is that normal didn't work. We have to be ready to take on this president, and by the way, something that hasn't been talked about as much tonight, take on his enablers in Congress. You know, when, when David Duke, when David Duke ran for Congress, ran for governor, the Republican Party 20 years ago ran away from him. Today, they are supporting naked racism in the White House, or at best silent about it. And if you were watching this at home, and you are a Republican member of Congress, consider the fact that when the sun sets on your career and they are writing your story of all the good and bad things you did in your life, the thing you will be remembered for is whether in this moment with this president, you found the courage to stand up to him or you continue to put party over country. Thank you, Mayor. Senator Sanders, as a senior statesman of the group, please respond to Mayor Budapest. Well, Pete is right. It's a question of vision. That's what it is, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're in between. And my vision, among other things, says that if we're going to fight for health care, we don't take money from the drug companies or the insurance companies. And I've asked all of the candidates who are running to say they will not accept money from those entities who, in my view, are going to war against the American people in terms of health care. That's a new vision. A new vision says that we must cancel completely student debt because the younger generation in this country today, for the first time in modern American history, will have a lower standard of living than their parents. Thank you, Senator Sanders.